Welcome to my species spotlight. Today's spotlight is going to be about the rosella. Rosellas are in a genus that consists of six species and 19 subspecies. Rosellas originate from Australia. They're in the genus Platycercus, which means flat-tailed or broad-tailed, which is one of the features of the rosella, their beautiful tail. Now there are many different kinds of subspecies of rosellas that I'm going to read to you because I will never remember them all. Basically, they're divided into two groups, the blue cheek rosellas and the white or pale cheek rosellas. Now in the blue, blue cheek rosellas, you have the Adelaide rosella, the crimson rosella, the green rosella, and the yellow rosella. And in the white or pale cheek rosella, um, you have the eastern rosella, which my rosella right here, Passion, is, um, is a white cheek rosella, northern rosella, pale headed rosella, western rosella, red backed Western Rosella, and there are many different um, mutations of these birds. I've seen them like Lutino, um, I guess more yellows and, and, and all different colors. I've, I've seen different mutations of all of these birds. Rosellas in the wild can be found in small flocks, and they eat uh, all kinds of food in the wild. They eat, you know, buds, uh, flowers, they eat insects, they eat leaves, even chew on bark, a lot of grass seeds, um, some fruit, they can raid the fruit trees, and you know, whatever vegetation they can get a hold of, they, they eat a variety of food out in the wild. Rosellas in the wild are cavity nesters, which means they nest inside holes in a tree, and they can lay up to four to seven eggs. The female incubates the eggs for 21 days. The male will come and go and feed the female as she incubates the eggs, and the babies are hatched after 21 days. The mother will feed them, and the father may help after two weeks, so the mother does a lot of the work. It may be hard to tell the difference between a male and a female, but generally males are bigger than the females and their beaks are a little bit bigger on the males. Um, the females might have a little bit more rounder head and the males are more colorful. So if you have a lot of them or a few of them, you can probably see the difference. Um, with juvenile rosellas, they're just duller in color. Health wise for rosellas, they can pretty much get any disease any bird can get, but they can get, they're more prone to intestinal worms if you keep them in an aviary with a natural ground, you know, with grass and plants and soil and all that. So they will need to be dewormed. And they also are prone to getting fungal diseases and they're prone to getting psittacosis. Rosellas vary in size depending on which species. They can vary between 10 to 14 and a half inches. The eastern rosella here, which passion is, is 12 inches long from the tip of his tail to the top of his beak. Rosellas are considered a medium-sized parrot. Um, they look pretty big, it's just that they have a very long tail and when they fly their wingspan is pretty large and they are a parrot, they're not a parakeet. So this is Passion, so he's an Eastern Rosella. He's almost one next month. He's a male. You can see how beautiful uh, colored he is, he's very bright in color. Eastern rosellas have a slightly cobby body, a small head, and a long flat tail. They're beautiful color. They have beautiful colors. Uh, their head and chest is bright red. They got a white patch on their cheeks. The rest of the body has a bright yellow base. They have light green thighs, a red patch under the tail. The tips of the wings are blue and the rest is filled with small black feathers with yellow borders. They're so beautiful. The tail has shades of green and blue mixed together. And on the back, the rump area, it's very light pale green. So I'm gonna talk about Rosellas has pets and if you should have one or not. <laughs> well, that's totally up to you, but I'll, I'll just share my experience. 
but in general if you're going to think of getting a rosella you need a, a large aviary even an outdoor aviary is really good so they can go you know maybe just in the summer for the day or if you have a, a place where it's warm all the time they can go yeah you like the aviary huh and they need a cage with a small bar spacing like maybe half inch as their head is small and um, you don't want them to get their head through the bars and get stuck and not be able to come back out. Now these rosellas are very flighty birds. They need to fly. I don't recommend them as caged pests to be in a cage you know a lot of the time or hardly any of the time maybe just for bedtime but they are considered Avery birds. Rosellas love to chew. Well Passion does anyway. He loves to chew the softer wood their beaks aren't that big so they can't really chew, chew like very hard wood but they would require some um, you know wood to chew on wooden toys shredding toys he loves the shredding toys he's always chewing away and they need plenty of perches they need a you know a really long flight cage oh sorry buddy I don't want to scare you so they can fly back and forth as I said they're very flighty they don't stand still very long and they're not very cuddly birds. They don't like to be touched. Mine doesn't anyway. And from what I read and all the Facebook groups that I'm on, nobody can touch them. They're very like a hands-off bird, almost like a canary uh, kind of would be, but not, um, you know, the canaries aren't as active as a rosella. And for diet-wise, I feed him lots of fresh, fresh foods. He likes fruits too. I find he likes fruits more than my other birds. I try not to give too much fruits as it can make them really hyper, but they do, you know, need fruits. I make them a chop mix of all different kinds of vegetables and lots of fresh greens, sprouts, sprouted millet, all the good stuff. And then he has a pelleted diet. That would be up to you if you want to feed pellets or seeds. You know, a lot of people don't want to feed seeds. A lot of people don't want to feed pellets, but I believe, especially the rosella does need seeds. I do feed a cockatiel mix. I mix a little bit of canary seed in with that and spray millet. Uh, he loves spray millet. I try to use it for training and treats and you know don't give him tons of it obviously and I don't leave a big piece in his cage as they'll just gorge on that eat nothing else. So um, oh and water too of course. Fresh water. Um, Rosellas love to bathe like every day. You have to provide them with a bathing opportunity. And every day he'll go in there, even twice a day sometimes. They like to keep those beautiful feathers beautiful, right? Here we go. Come on, over here. No. See, the reason I got him up here is because this is his travel cage I brought into the room with me. Has He doesn't step up on my hand anymore. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about passion. Um, he was hand raised. I actually, I actually hand raised him myself. The breeder fed him and then I did and I raised him and I believe that getting a hand fed baby and raising him myself would make him a really awesome tame pet because I know Rosellas are known to not make good pets and once they're you know beyond their babyhood or whatever once they're weaned they turn into a wild animals basically wild birds and they don't want no human interactions well it's true it happened to me so passion is like that. He doesn't step up on me anymore. If I put my hand in front of him, he'll probably bite me. And I'll try to give him treats and all that. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, Rosella's anyway, passion is very, very smart. They're very smart birds. He knows the wave. Wave? That a boy. He knows the spin. He does know to, to come to me. He'll follow me like from room to room if I call him passion. Wait, passion. And he can talk up a storm. It says Rosellas aren't, you know, on the internet, they aren't much talkers, but I don't know. Passion, you can prove them all wrong. Rosellas, they eat with their hand. They pick up their food and put it in their little foot. It's so cute. And did I tell you that they can live up to 20 years? Especially in captivity, because there's no predators or anything, you know, to get them, like in the wild. Um, you know, as long as they're healthy, they're pretty hardy birds. They, um, you know, they don't get sick easily, so that's a good thing. 
and they're pretty bossy birds and I did say they're very intelligent. Oh, they whistle, their sound. Yeah, actually, I love it so much. They, they whistle a lot. Like if you whistle some tunes, they'll catch on. He's, he's got a few tunes going. I wish I can sit here all day and whistle tunes to him because they learned them all. But one of them is the Adams Family. does that one and he just does other random whistles that I do. <laughs> he does a lot of whistles and a lot of sounds and one thing he does is he mimics um, the microwave, he mimics the phone. He's mimicking the fire alarm, which isn't good because my dogs are terrified and he's really loud. He's really loud when he does the whistles, but they're not really a loud bird. They're not screamers like say an Indian ringneck would be. So you can have one of these birds in your apartment or townhouse or somewhere, you know, where you, you can't have a lot of noise but they will whistle a lot. If you're thinking of breeding them, you can't put them together. You can put one pair. Um, they will kill the other male and other birds as well. If you have a bunch of birds like I do and you want to mix them all, um, it's best to have maybe one. If you have a pair, you got to take them out, especially during breeding time or they'll just kill all the other birds. They can be nasty to the other birds. And you know, when breeding that once these birds are weaned, you know, especially how I got my bird and I hand fed it, once he was weaned, they turn very aggressive to humans, which I can say, yes, it's true. <laughs> turn very aggressive. Um, right now he's being a good boy, obviously. Let me see if I can get him over here. He doesn't like when I move the cage. There we go, he's so pretty though. He's so beautiful, yes. It's a shame, they're beautiful birds. But um, I, don't, I don't recommend them as pets. Don't get one. Unless you have just the one bird, he can free fly in your house all day. You have a lot of time with them. Um, you don't have to put them in a cage. Like if you do have a cage, you need a huge Avery. I don't have room in my house for a huge, huge Avery. I have an outdoor Avery for the summer, but it's just for a few hours a day, not all day. I get hawks come in. It's not the type of air Avery where he can live in all day which I wish I had, but I get cold winters here, freezing cold winters, he can't stay outside in the winter. So he's he's more happy, loose in the house, um, not going in his cage. He likes to go in his cage at night, and in the morning he eats his food, but he has to be out all day and won't be happy. I've heard stories of Rosellas um, plucking all their feathers out, and they get very, very depressed in their cage, and... Um, Never clip their wings. Never clip a Rosella's wings. That's the worst thing you can do. It will make them depressed. They need to fly. These birds are basically a flying machine. They're very energetic. They don't sit still very long. He's just sitting here because, like I said, it's in a new room. He's just kind of looking around, getting used to it. And um, But they need to be on the move to, to keep them happy. So if you want your bird to be happy, or a bird to be happy, don't get a Rosella. Get a different kind of, of bird. One that's more, you know, likes to just hang around and sit on your shoulder, you know, like, I don't know what kind of bird, but not like a Rosella, but there are many types of birds to get. But if you read the internet, just look and it'll say they're not meant to be as pet birds. They don't like to be touched. They don't like to be cuddled. You know, there there are some, there are some that, that are nice. I've seen them on YouTube and I've heard some stories. But, you know, I would say maybe 95% of them aren't good as pets. You might be lucky to get a nice one as a pet. Like maybe if I only had the one bird and I spent all the time with him, he might be okay, but he's still very aggressive and he attacks me. He, he just lunges at me and bites me. So I think he might do that even if I just had him. I really don't know. I couldn't tell you that because I, I wouldn't be able to, to figure that out or do that realistically. But anyways, they are beautiful birds. I hope I give you some information about them. So um, <laughs> think twice if you want one. 
just really think twice. If you can accommodate their needs, then yes, of course, their beautiful sounds. Um, if you don't want a, a bird that you can pick up or have them step up on you. He doesn't even step up on a stick. He, he, he doesn't even do that on, on a perch. He won't step up. So basically, I just got to call him. He'll follow me. He'll follow me. I call, 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 show him a treat. And finally, he'll go in his cage uh, where I need him to be safely. But if he's out all day and I really need to get him in the cage, like if I need to go out or people are coming in and out, I can't get him in the cage. It's very dangerous. He can fly out that door. The key, they're very, like I said, agile flyers. They can fly at top speed. Like he just zooms around my house, like all the way, like through my openings and around and around. And if someone opens that door, it would take them two seconds to, to be gone. So you really have to make sure your doors are closed, your windows are closed, and you have screens on your windows or your Rosella will be gone. So if you want to see other videos like this one on other uh, species, check out the video that's going to be on the screen here and you can see which bird is right for you.